Well, howdy there, GMP fans. This week, we're covering a movie that's not a 7, not an 8, not a 9. No, it's a 10! A 10! It's a fucking 10! It's Varsity Blues! Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's guilty movie pleasure. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Boy. Yeah! Football! That's right. Sports! Sports, you know what my favorite thing about this movie is? That it's about sports. Yeah. I love sports. I know that about you. And it's about, uh, you know, it features several varying degrees of southern accents, too. That you there, know? It's pan-Texas. It's across the whole state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just pan-Texas. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like pan pan's labyrinth or yep. uh, pan-am. Or pan-fry. Or pan-air. <laughs> or, or Panama. Panama. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are Guilty Movie Pleasures. If you're tuning into us for the first time, thank you. We hope you like it. Uh, if you do, stick around for more episodes. If this is your 150th watch, you somehow watched more episodes than we have, but uh, you've well imagined done. the future, so well we appreciate that. Thanks for thanks for tuning in wherever you're coming in in the in the chronology of our show. Uh, I'm your host, Ben Begley, at the Ben Begley and all that stuff. Man. And hey, my co-host, hey. as always, the man who's actually funny on the show Stop and who just doesn't it. yell into the microphone the Stop. entire time. Today I'm going to yell into the microphone. <laughs> we should We're switch. changing things today. I just want to be the cool, like, dry, deadpan guy and you be <laughs> Yelly McEnergy. Dan! Fucking Dan! Dan! I hope I didn't kill people. Hey, wait, I don't think we said your now. name. Oh, in my case name's they're Jesse new. McIntosh, hey. and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Too Much Jesse. Yeah, yeah. And and for those of you who are uninitiated, Jesse and I are real-life friends, not just podcast yes. friends. Yes, yes. So. so you can watch us in real life as well. <laughs> Please don't, because that'll be creepy. All right, well. And Jesse uh, guys, recorded a new video today that he's going to post. Yes. Um, it's going to seem staged, but it's uh, literally every... You, you even say that in the video. They're going to think we rehearsed this. Every week I mean to plan an intro, and then my dad brain makes me go, oh, and then even Steve was in the booth going, intro, 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 <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a teen, a teen. Anyways... So, in honor of the Super Bowl and all things sports, uh, we're talking Varsity Blues, which I don't know if I ever saw this. I know I saw the strip club scene because I was a horny sure. teenager, and we didn't have internet porn back then, so you would just rent movies from Blockbuster on VHS that you heard had boobs in it and fast forward until you saw them. This one has a variety of boobs. It does have a variety. A nice, a nice sprinkling of boobs. Because I do remember... I, and I don't remember if I remember the whipped cream bikini from this movie or from Not Another Teen Movie where Chris Evans spoofs it and comes out in the whipped cream bikini. Yeah. You'd think I would remember the difference. It's a... It, I, I mean, I remember the difference. I mean, I know that I had seen this. I just don't know if I saw it because I saw the movie or I saw, like, pictures of it afterwards, if that or makes sense. Or if you sense. just dreamt it into life. If, if you wished it I wished into Allie world. Larder into life with a... I mean... We'll get into this, but James Vanderbeek's character has uh, the 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 um, control of a saint in this sure. movie. He has everyone throwing everything at him, and he doesn't go, you know, full. He, yeah, for, full out. Somehow he doesn't have the restraint to go there, but once he's there. And there's a whipped cream bikini. He's like, ah, this is, I ah, made a mistake. It's too far. I'm, it's I'm watching far. my calories. It's, <laughs> if you had come out with something a little less fattening. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If, I, if it had been cool whip. I, do, I honestly don't remember if I saw the whole thing. I, I don't really, I don't think so. I think it was just fast forward boobs. Okay, return it to the blockbuster. But first rewind. But first rewind. Be see kind. boobs again. Yeah. Uh, and, and rewind, be kind. Um, but I actually, I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. Sports movies for me are always kind of like watching actual sports where I'm like, Ugh, I don't think I'm going to be a fan of this. I don't know. It's football. I don't really care. And then I start watching it and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of invested. Oh, man, there's a lot of emotion in this. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. The underdog's going to win like the Super Bowl this weekend. I was yeah. like, I don't fucking care. And then I'm like, oh. Oh, the underdog! <laughs> I, I hear like their stories like Nick Knowles, was that his name? Nick Foles, very Nick close. Foles, yes. not Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. <laughs> Nick, Nick Nolte played a great game on Sunday. It was out of nowhere. He, he was Nick, backing up all year. Nick Foles, I like started hearing stuff about his back and I started getting invested in it and mm -hmm. I'm like, that's how I am all the time and that's how I'm with sports movies too where I'm like, ah, I've never seen Friday Night Lights which is apparently amazing. <sighs> The movie or the TV show? Either. Wow. But I'm sure if I started watching it, I get caught up in the emotion of other people's excitement for it because yeah. i feel the same thing for nerd culture so i get it you yes. know sports is just really cool nerd culture 
you know. It's just, with, it's, it takes the same character arcs. Yeah, and absolutely. It bring, yeah, it, absolutely. It just places So I had a lot of fun. The, I thought the stakes were great. I thought John Voight was, I wanted to punch him in the fucking face. I kept being like, what a dick. Yeah. But not far outside of what I assume some coaches are like. Yeah. Rewatching like, it, I I loved John Voight. And not I didn't love his character. He's a great like, villain. He was amazing in this movie. Yeah. And it's uh it's interesting because like So the, you'd seen it before. I've seen it a bunch of times, yeah. Uh, the the coach in sports movies can usually be um we were talking earlier about the women in this movie, which we will get to again. And you were mentioning there were a lot of them were just one note. It's problematic, the uh, portrayal yes, of women sure. in this movie. Um, the coach in sports movies a lot of times can be just one note. Yeah. Um, and I think this was written as just one note. And I think John Boyd did a really interesting job of making it not that. Yeah. And I would say yes and no, because I think his portrayal is great. I would have loved a little sneak sliver of, of something that... that like humanity, like yeah. any sort of... And I think maybe at the end, I forget what he's looking at. He's looking at a trophy. Did he play ball at one point and fail? Or he would... And they, you don't call don't football ball. Yeah, that's baseball, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. you play football. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> gonna... <laughs> that's okay. So like when we've you done... You can if you when, want. When we've done like the second movie in a series and I have to fill you in, you're going to have to fill me in on all things sports on, during yeah, this podcast. The, the prequel of Varsity Blues is football. Football. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we can, we not can talk soccer. about the we can not, talk about the not prequel. soccer football American, American football fo football americano as they say. So are sports movie are you a huge fan of sports movies? I really like yeah. I, there there are a lot of them that I They're really your like Marvel and movie. a lot of them are terrible, but yeah, I'm I'm into them cuz I love sports and I love just like you talked about they like they they really lean on it in boxing movies like yeah. the guy or the team that no one believed in that um just like put his mind to it or worked harder mm -hmm. or was tougher or was grittier than everyone else and emerged champion like every boxing movie ever yeah and it's easy to do in boxing but I love because them. because boxing is like you like the under the um the normal person's understanding of boxing is just that you have to just be grittier and work harder and um and you'll win Right. Punch harder. Punch harder and like just you have to want it more. It's That's much more complicated from what I understand. Sure. Yeah. You have to <laughs> you have to be good. I don't um, know. But, but yeah, just just the idea that you want it more. It's easier to sell that to an audience in a boxing movie yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, and it's one on one in boxing, so it's easier to see. Um but that is that is the typical uh, arc in sports movies generally. Mm -hmm. Is we're looking at the team that no one believes in, or the just an individual that no one like believes the in Ducks. that conquers. That's exactly right. Yeah, Bad News Bears. Yeah, any of that. Mm -hmm. I end up, like I said, I end up really falling for these kind of movies, and same with boxing movies. Uh, a, a boxing movie, more of a mixed martial arts movie, Warrior. Yes, which I loved, mm -hmm. even though it's completely unrealistic that these guys that like had barely any training would then make their way up the ranks of the MMA like that. right but so that's the thing right that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah. is like they movies will have you believe that all you have yeah. to do in sports is want it and work harder and I think you'll be able to do it i think there's even james Vanderbeek's speech which we'll get to at the end is basically uh -huh. like we got to want this more than anything that's that's always the thing is like, like i want a lot of things more than anything i'm not getting it i, I always find this funny cuz they probably talked about it in the beginning like in the pregame to the super bowl also uh -huh. is this is always how how they sort of set the stage is like well who wants it more who is this more important to and like if the stakes are significantly different for two people then that can matter but if like the eagles uh had they ever won before they've never won a super bowl before. so the stakes yeah. are way higher the stakes them. are very high but you also sort of like there is also a low a minimum that you can care because it's the super bowl yeah. right so everyone cares yeah. everyone really wants it it's just varying degrees of how much you really want yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. see and i think i've learned about myself that i can watch final series games like the playoffs in basketball and things like that I, I don't know if I could hang for the whole season. Not that I don't respect sports. I just tune out. And, and also, I don't have enough time to watch three hours yeah. of multiple times a week. Sure. The state, well, and to your point, the stakes are so much higher. When oh, yeah. It's, when That's it's, why I love it. Win or go home. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much more. Uh, but then I also get, like, emotionally devastated when I see, like, grown-ass men crying at the end. I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, ah, oh, this is heartbreaking. That's why I can't watch stuff like The Voice and things like that where they're like, this person, and they tell this huge awful like horrible story of how they've overcome all this adversity and then they don't get picked to be the the main person i'm like no turn your chair around assholes well from what i understand based on everything everyone's told me about sports and sports movies real life sports they, is, didn't, want they didn't want it enough <laughs> they didn't want it enough oh shit 
All right. Well, let's get into this because um, we've got tons of sound clips. Uh, <laughs> this movie's so ridiculous. The teacher is my favorite. Um, the sex ed teacher. Uh, we should have seen that strip club scene coming a mile away. Yeah. Which we'll get to, but the way she conducts her sex ed class is hilarious. And, and so we'll, that scene is four minutes, and I pulled two sound clips from it. <laughs> because it's so... Yeah. There's so much from it. But let's get into the plot first in under three minutes. We apparently don't have the ticking clock, but uh, well, we'll make it. We'll trade off. And I'm going to have you start this off, Jesse. Oh, so uh, are we ready in the booth? Let's do this. All right, so we start, and James Vanderbeek is giving us a voiceover of, like, football is the most important thing. We played football from when we were little kids, and now we grow up, and mm -hmm. everyone plays, uh, and everyone, it's just required of them. And so then uh, they're dry, the Billy Bob's driving his truck around, um, and he's picking everyone up, and this is the football team, and we get uh, James Vanderbeek first, and then yep. we get the uh, Paul Walker, and then we get... Uh, tweeter. Yeah, Tweeter. Scott Conn. Uh -huh. um, so they're all in there, and this is, like, the crew. Um, yep. And so they get to practice, or they get to the game, I think it's first, right? They go to... They have a game first, yes. and yeah, and they win. Um, and oh, but first you see Har Har Harper or whatever is getting an injection in his knee, yep. and they're like, "Oh, that's weird." Yeah, interesting. Um, and then uh, Coach go or they have the pep rally first, and Coach gives uh, the big speech at mm -hmm. the pep rally, and he's like, "We win because we always win, and I always win." And Paul Walker comes out and is like, "I had a dream last night that we were winning." And then I woke up and I was sad. And then I was happy because we're gonna win by a lot more. Oh crap! Yeah, oh I'm boy. wasting too much time. So, anyways, they go. They go to the big game. Everything's crazy. I forgot to do the ticking sound. Uh, uh, Paul Walker. He, he gets uh, Billy Bob's getting injured, and and the coach makes him go back in, mm -hmm. and he passes out, and Paul Walker gets his knee blasted, and he's out. He's out of the game. They put James Vanderbeek in. I feel like we missed something. Yep, we did. That's okay. Go we ahead. missed a. Oh, we missed a lot of shit. <laughs> we missed uh, a party they go to where they randomly nut shot a guy. We missed the sex ed class thing we missed all this build up of their characters and how Paul Walker's a god and how football is this big thing and then the injury happens and then James Vanderbeek is thrown in and this whole time we've been giving all this stuff about how his dad's his dad was a loser too and he's a loser the coach doesn't like either of them and so he's been set up to be the underdog and then he throws and he's a fucking rock star the first game out and he's now suddenly the biggest shit in town and coach is telling him you gotta listen to what I say you can't do what you want to do and he's like but my thing's better and coach is like we're doing what I want to do um, and then uh, they go to visit uh, him in the hospital Mm -hmm. and he needs a bunch of surgeries and they're saying he could be out for a year two years instantly um, Allie Larder is all down so yeah so she's into James Vanderbeek James Vanderbeek drops her off at the at the party and then uh, Scott Kahn's driving around naked in a police car yep um, that happened uh, and James Vanderbeek's wandering around he's like I don't know what I want to do with my life and his girlfriend is like whatever uh, you're a big football player now um, she turns on him real yeah, quick real quick for I mean it just kind of throws out everything uh, so then um then there's uh, this. Then there's the scene where oh my god! Ah, ah, oh, so he, he, brother, he, he, he just wants to have fun, so he wants to take his guys out, and he brings Paul yeah. Walker oh, with yeah, him, yeah, and they yeah, go yeah, to the strip yeah, club, yeah. and they get drunk, and they're hungover, you and then it. they fuck up the next game. And coach is like, "You motherfuckers, I'm gonna ruin your scholarship to Brown. I heard you got into Brown." Yeah. And he's like, "Well, then I might quit the team." And his girlfriend's like, "Be a hero. You got to come up in the world. You can't just do what everyone else wants you to do." And he's like, "All right." So they go and they play the first half, and they're getting fucked up. And the coach is like, "You guys are fucking," and they're like, "We're not going. If you shoot the running back up with." The needle we're not yeah. going out there they're like we're only going out there if you're not out there he says okay or he doesn't say okay he goes out he and leaves. no one's with him and they play and they make the winning play on the hook and ladder and, and everyone is happy and we get like a voice over their future yay <laughs> man i was useless during that Ooh, i was useless that's the first time hey, ever that i've been not useless you took so. almost the entire run of that yeah. by the way i think here's what i chimed in let me jump 30 minutes of the movie, and then I went, no, fuck, let oh me back my. up and cover that. And then I went, Ugh! that was my, uh, I full-on Arnold Schwarzenegger did. Listen, those were important yeah, contributions. Yeah. Those were really important Get contributions. Get to the chapel, Jesse. I will say, um, and I haven't brought this up before because I've always been on the other end of it, but I think that I did better in that plot in under three minutes because I wanted it more. <laughs> you did want it more. Yeah. I definitely didn't want it. I had that the hunger much. in my belly. I couldn't remember anything from this movie when push came to shove. But now let's get into the nitty gritty of this thing. Uh, scene by scene. Yeah, right. What if we were just like every okay. single let's scene? Go one. Literally every single moment of this. <laughs> um, I love this. I just want to talk about the brother as a whole so I remember it. Uh, the brother, uh, Moxon's brother is so interesting. How he, he in the beginning he's Christ and he's yep. he's crucified and he's at the breakfast table and it's hilarious because he's just pissing off his dad as he's trying to reach for food on a cross and then later on he shows up as a follower of Allah um, I forget that it's a very long name 
Yes, we have. We actually have the sound. Oh, clip, do we have that clip? I believe. Uh, one name. One name. One name. One name. One name. I only answered one night. I'm the great and honorable El Ali Akbar Shabazz Da. <laughs> Not to be confused with Admiral Akbar from the Star Wars movies. That's a trap. It's it's very important to it's differentiate. Very... Can we hear that name one more time? I only answered one night. I'm the great and honorable El Ali Akbar Shabazz Da. That accent, though. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that accent, though. Strong. So here's the funny thing about this character. We, he just starts showing up as different religious leaders yes. and, and, and voices of religion. You never really understand why. Nope. It's just like he's choosing to make it a very specific tryout for Halloween costumes all year long. Yes. Yes. But we never get like, oh, he's like questioning his faith or into religious studies. It's just like a funny it's joke. It's really just window dressing. and <laughs> Just to make his brother weird. Yeah, yeah. And he <laughs> ends up being a cult leader for 10-year-olds. <laughs> it should be a sequel to Varsity Blues. Where it's yeah, just well, like, he like, in the last time we see him, he's bringing in his followers. And, oh, and yeah. the mom's like, did you start a cult? And he's like, I did. Did what yeah did i miss that maybe and then did she actually say that yeah she's like oh baby did you start a cult and he's like yes i did and his dad i think it was his dad is like get get your friends out of here get them out of here i don't remember that at all yeah is mm -hmm. there a director's cut of this movie or was i just I getting sleepy and missed this maybe both son of a bitch i don't remember now i gotta rewatch it so uh so we get introduced to the family and and all the characters now football is life here uh, Billy Bob is driving the pickup truck. They're very reckless. They're all sitting in the back of the truck. I was no seat belt. I was so worried about the safety of other so drivers worried. throughout this entire movie. There's a lot of recklessness. But I grew up in Ohio, and there were different parts of Ohio, like Castalia, where my uh, my cousins lived, where it's just like long stretches of dirt roads of, or freeways and, and just straight yes. straight shots. Yeah. People drive like that in smaller towns. So I, I get it. But Billy Bob... It's funny because at first I thought he was really annoying, and I was like, "This guy's gonna wear on me so much." When he's like, "Hey, mate, hey, where does that thing you need, Dingle Scoot and Pooter Snatch at the Hoot and Scoot?" You know, and he's got like he actually says, "That's, that's a quote." That Dingle a... Scoot and Pooter Snatch at the Hoot and Scoot. Did he say that? Uh, yeah, that part. Yeah, you missed that. See, that I missed the right cult thing before the cult thing. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. He's dipping. If I saw it right, it looked like he's dipping pancakes or waffles into peanut butter and then drinking syrup. Correct. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Breakfast on the go. Even. Even Will Ferrell as Elf would go to that, he, I feel like. So, and not only that, but he, he we see him dipping the pancakes or waffles or whatever he has into the peanut butter. Some sort of carb bread yeah, of sorts. Uh -huh. And then he takes a shot of the syrup. And then we never go back to the dipping into the peanut butter. But several times we go back to the syrup. <laughs> so gross. He takes many more hits of that syrup. It's so gross. It's disgusting. Oh, God. Not, not to mention, like... If if there's a mishap with that syrup, yeah. like your car is so fucked. Yeah. What yeah. what are you gonna do with syrup everywhere in your car? I spilled coffee with an excess amount of creamer in my car yes. last week, and it fucked it for it's sticky and it kind of smells funky now. Yeah. It's it's super annoying. So syrup is way worse. Way worse. Way worse. It's like tree sap, basically. Yeah. In, in on your car, you know. But inside. So uh, Billy Bob, I will say though that he grew on me. Like it, they just really. And I assume to like set up the characters, they hit the gas on them hard so that you instantly know who they are. Yes. And then they back off. And then I'll skip way ahead. The scene where he's shooting his trophies with the shotgun and he has some genuine emotion there. Uh, I was I was actually like, oh, they humanize Billy Bob. And I'm like, this is cool. I dig this. And I dig that about a lot of the stuff. And like like they, like we were saying how some of the women are problematic and Allie Larder just being down to fuck immediately. Yep. Mm -hmm. They kind of add a little bit of of shades of gray to her character when when James Vanderbeek turns her down and she starts crying and she's just like, I just want to get out of here. That was my ticket out. And then you're like, oh, thankfully, they, they made her a little bit more than just... Although her, her choice to instantly say fuck you to her boyfriend of many years and try and fuck his best friend, who's also dating her, yeah. her now ex-boyfriend's sister... Yeah. They did still morally. <laughs> they gave her a why, but it was still like every. It was other the weakest why ever. Was real problematic. Like <laughs> yeah. you can just leave if you like. It's not that hard. The, her whole thing was like, well, I want to get out of here. It's like 
All and right. then get out of here. You don't have to like... She didn't want it bad enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. This whole movie is just testing us on which characters want who it bad enough. Who has the biggest heart and who has the biggest desire. She doesn't. Nope. She mm -hmm. She's just she's just a cheerleader who uh, maybe doesn't study hard enough. And her only ticket was to ride the coattails of a, uh, you know... She didn't, she didn't study how to leave town. Like, there, <laughs> she, she didn't study the bus schedule, I guess. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So Paul Walker is introduced, and Scott Kahn, the wild man. And I think we have a clip. Oh, first off, clip number one, I believe, is describing football in this town, right? This is, this is actually our introduction to Paul Walker. Okay, okay. I had the most beautiful drag last night. Well, all right. You know, uh, similarly, uh, because there's less time to have conversations, my wife and I now that we're chasing around a one year, a 14 month old, uh, adorable 14 month old, but it's hard to have finish sentences around each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, I, and I came down this morning from waking up because Daisy had woken up in the middle of the night. And I was sleep deprived. And I came down and I wanted to share my dream with my wife. Sure. But right as I was about to start it, Daisy started gra going to grab something dangerous, and it interrupted things. So the conversation pretty much went like this. I had the most beautiful drag last night. And then, well, all right. And then yeah. she went, all right, shut up. I got to go save our daughter from imminent danger. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I, so We also talk in southern accents around the house really? just to confuse our daughter. Keep everything uh, interesting in yeah. the Begley household. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're always like, Daisy, where are you from? You from the South? No, my parents just talk like this. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't mm -hmm. know where she got it. Not at all. <laughs> we totally messed her up. I, I was, Wouldn't it be fucked up if you did that to your kid? I always thought it would be fun to, <laughs> to raise your kid with a British accent, because they're beautiful accents. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how to do a British accent, so I can't do it. But. Just, um, you could you could raise your daughter to be more um, just refined, because I've, of, I've often said that if, if you were given a choice between brain surgeons, not knowing their, their history or their or their medical background, sure. and someone came to you and was like, Jesse, we're going to perform an emergency surgery on your brain right now. Are you okay with that? Or if they were like, hey, yo, Jesse, we're going to perform an emergency surgery in your brain right now. You okay with that? Who just instinctually are you going to choose? Definitely the second one, obviously. <laughs> Definitely the second one. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but... Wait a minute. You're going to choose the second one? <laughs> you did yeah, You fucked oh, my point. No, I fucked it up. Now, that's not saying that, that Southern people aren't smart, obviously, at all. But there's this preconceived notion because of movies like this and because yes. of portrayals of stereotypes that we just assume British people are smart. Yes. I will say... And evil. And evil. <laughs> and we assume that if you have a thick Southern draw, that you're not, which is not true. Yeah. Not true at all. Yes. There's plenty of smart people. But I will say, when we were in London, my wife and I... Uh, the smartest thing I'd ever heard about a biscuit was described, uh, meaning a, a cookie, cookie, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this old man bit into a biscuit next to us, and it broke apart. And he said, my dear, this biscuit has no structural integrity at all. <laughs> and I went, wow. My dear. No structural it, integrity what, to a cookie. Fuck you for criticizing <laughs> your biscuit. <laughs> that harshly. Yeah. Return so, it then, asshole. So to clarify, uh, Southern people are smart and British people aren't always smart. Right. That was the point of you, that lesson. Do you know what, though? I was in Australia last year and I we ran into some locals at a bar and we were talking to them about American culture. And he was uh, he attempted to do an American accent and his go-to American accent was a Southern accent. Yep. Or so, New York. Or like, well, hey... Yeah, I mean, but he, what he went to was Southern. Really? He, yeah, he was, like, being all hillbilly. See, and the current administration is not helping nope. us look smarter. Not That's unfortunate. All. But we won't get into that because we haven't gotten into any of the movie yet. So uh, now we get Tweeter. Uh, Scott Kahn's character is introduced, and he just wants some ass. So let's play it. I can't focus. I need to get some ass. <laughs> I need to hit some ass. I'm about to fuck your pig. How about that? <laughs> I love the long pause. <laughs> like he's just searching around. Like, what can I fuck that'll be socially acceptable for my friends? What is here right now? <laughs> what is here that's not one of my male friends? Yep. Because that'll make them uncomfortable. The pig! The pig is fine, though. Which uh, Billy Bob calls a dog. Yeah, he calls it dog, and its name is Bacon. I'm fairly certain that Billy Bob is convinced his pig is a dog. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I mean, he's had enough head injuries. Yeah. That... That and it's clear that he is fucked up from these injuries. He also treats him like a dog and feeds him beer. Yeah, and because <laughs> pigs drink beer, right? You know, <laughs> pigs. I need some ass. Yeah. <laughs> I just want some ass. Oh my god, 
That was that was just me in college, but like in my dorm room alone, crying about it. Like, I just need some ass. Yeah. I want some ass, but I don't know how to get it. I'm too afraid to talk to women. Damn. That... And I probably didn't say I need ass. It was probably more like I would like a date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would really like to go on a date. So it was absolutely nothing like that. I would love dinner and a movie more than anything <laughs> in this world. I just would love someone to marathon 24 with me. I would love to anticipate a full day that I might hold someone's hand. And I don't even need to. I just want that promise at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, that's really true for me. Anyway, so now we're introducing... The difference between real life high school and movie high school. Exactly. I, would, I, I need ass so badly I will fuck a pig is movie high school. <laughs> In real life high school, I just really like some sort of affection to make me feel like I'm not alone in this yeah. void of... Teenage awkwardness. I'm just going to write someone's name in my journal over and over. I'm going to write again. slam poetry, which is what I, I used to Hell write really yeah. angry poetry in college, in high school. High school, not college. No. no. Transitioned way out of that. Transitioned to angry screenplays uh, that no one will ever read. Anyway, so Lance Harper's introduced. Harper or Harder? Harbor. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. Lance Har- Har- Harbor. <laughs> He's got harder abs, am I right? Uh, Paul Walker, rest in peace. He's so charming in this movie. He play I, the cast is great. I will say that the cast in this movie is top to bottom, pretty perfectly Perfect. cast. It's yeah. awesome, and um, his speech is so good. Uh, it, 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 just like that dreamy football player. Like they set up, they set him up like he's the Beatles, which we don't have a clip from it. I looked, but sorry. I'm stupid, and I'm about to get hit in the nuts. <laughs> No, that's not him. But uh, they uh, they they set him up like he's one of the Beatles, where like there's a section of just girls that are like screaming and like an, uh, just reacting like oh when he's sad and and excited when he's happy, and they set up this world great, and then they show how they're kind of above the law when they go to this party, and there's this weird old dude there that's just like yeah I never miss a season opener party, and it's just like. It's, he's he's a sad dude. It's he's very like uncomfortable in his forties, hanging out with a bunch of high schoolers, yeah. drinking from the keg. He, he should have fucked one of the quarterbacks to get out of town because <laughs> he, he he's stuck there hey, and it's a problem for you him. You know what it is? Didn't, he didn't want it. Didn't bad want enough. it. Didn't want it. <laughs> so, but so Tweeter approaches this guy, and uh, this is his interaction with him. Can we play clip number three? I'm stupid, and I'm about to get hit in the nuts. And then he just clocks this dude right in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. Which normally, uh, and they're filming for a America's Funniest Home Videos type thing. Yes, which are. basically, that's what America's Funniest Home Videos was. It's right. Just dads getting and hit still in the nuts. is. Still. Believe it or not, that's still on the air. Yeah, yeah. It's it, that's all it was, and we thought it was hilarious. And nothing has changed. <laughs> nothing has changed. We haven't grown as a culture, humor wise. The only thing that's changed is they were using like a big camcorder, and now we just use our phones. Yeah, now we just use our phones. Yeah. yeah. Now it doesn't have that sound of like <laughs> right <laughs> with the VHS going right. So, uh, normally I'm not a fan of, you know, hitting people indiscriminately in the nuts, but this guy deserved it, because he's a creeper. Yeah. And he, he didn't want it bad enough. <laughs> Listen, don't, <laughs> don't hang out at high school parties, man. No, no. I'll never There's forget... There's a community college around that I'll, you go to. I'll never forget, when I graduated college and I moved out here, me and my buddies, uh, his sister was a few years younger than us, and she invited us to an Abercrombie and Fitch party, where, like, these workers from Abercrombie were hanging out. Dope. And we were, like, 22, 23 at the time. We didn't realize that half of them were high school, half of them were barely college. We felt like the grossest old people ever. Like we, even though we're like twenty two or twenty three, yeah. we still felt like you're right there. We're like, oh fuck, because they were kind of like looking at us weird. Like, what are you guys doing here? And then I remember the cops showed up, and we went running. And then we're like, why are we running? We're all of age to be drinking right now, but everybody else ran. And we we're like, that was. That was a really shitty party. We just kind of sat on the couch and just, like, had the beers we brought, and that was it. You don't even notice it, but it's so significant. Yeah. When you're, like, maybe, like, that first winter break when you come back and you go hang out oh, with yeah. high school people, and you're like, oh, this is just, like, old times. Yeah. But, like, the fart, like, a year or two out of high school, oh, like, yeah. going to hang out with high school people, you're like, god damn, this is weird. It's super this is weird. so different. And the maturity level's crazy different, it's too. infinitely lower. And it, even, like, when I was, I had to drop off something at the Amazon in Westwood, and I, I hadn't been on a college campus in forever, and just parking there and seeing all the college students, I was like, fuck, I am old. Yeah. I am, I think I'm like, I still feel 30, even though I'm 36, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm 36. I still <laughs> jog to my cars. <laughs> I still walk walk briskly. That's right. You know, when I have to pee during a movie, yeah. I can I can walk <laughs> at a power speed, so I don't miss that much. When I wake up at three a.m. to pee, 
<laughs> oh, we sound like we're in our 60s. Okay, so let's actually get into the movie a little bit more. Okay, I, right before this, I was like, I'm going to stay on track today. No, I'm not. Um, so Mox is planning to get out. We find uh, we find it with him and his girlfriend, Jules. Yeah. And she's like, I don't date football players, which is weird, because he's, he's on the bench the whole time, so I guess that's how she justifies it. I she's, guess so. And he's reading Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Slaughterhouse-Five, in his playbook instead, yeah. which the coach is not cool with. Yeah. Which is ironic because he goes full like Fahrenheit 451 on him and like throws the book. He He's, doesn't burn it. Right. But um, I got real literature nerd right there. That's all right. Uh, we're, we're switching gears in our podcast. We're guilty movie book books. Guilty pleasures. movie books. Yep. Um, there are a couple of things. So I have like a little bit of a bone to pick with sports movies. Like a lot of them, very specific moments, the mm -hmm. way they depict things are off and very like cinematic and. Um, this was one of those things where, like, the backup quarterback during the game is not sitting there reading the playbook. He's watching the game, or he's like <laughs> calling in plays, or he's doing something involved in the game. He's not like, just in case I go in, I got to make sure I know what my tight end is doing. Just on in case double I... R wide. Like, no, no, double R wide. Doing... I made that. Up. Okay. That's okay. not a real okay. thing. I, I, you could have pulled me. Yeah. Yeah. And I did momentarily. You but, did. Uh, yeah, like the time for that is prior to the start of the game, and so because like, otherwise he has no clue what the fuck's going on in yeah. the game. They'd be like, "Go in, huh? Why? What? What happened?" Or like, just you know, be there with your team, like mm -hmm. be involved. Um, so even him, coach glancing over and seeing him looking at his playbook, he would have hit that out of his. He hands. would have been like, "Hey, man, get your fucking head in the game." Coach didn't give two shits no, about, he didn't. He didn't care about him. So we do have a clip from uh, another clip from the party where Billy Bob's drinking. Like crazy with Jules, I believe, yes. right? And Jules uh -huh. is doing the, She's the playing quarters. quarters, and um, I know Flip Cup. I forgot it's called Quarters. Pretty obvious. <laughs> she's a she's a boss at Quarters. Try not to complicate the names. Of yeah, and and Billy Bob goes and throws up in the uh, laundry machine while uh, while Allie Larder and Paul Walker are fucking on the dryer. Yeah. Which I always thought that because she says let the dryer do the work. Dryers don't really run that hard. You would think a that you don't need it that hard. It's a nice little gentle it's rumble. A gentle rumble. Okay, yeah. okay. But anyways, uh, so we got the puke and rally. Can we play that? I'm back. Puke and rally. Yeah. Woo! I, I, I had a bunch of friends like that in college who would just puke and rally, and I I would always stop myself before I got to puking and be like, drink water and sober up is right. what I would do, and then rally. Right. But I could never puke and rally. No, I. <clears throat> As you know, from a year and a half of doing this podcast, mm -hmm. vomit is my least favorite oh, it's thing your in least, the world. And that's why as soon as it was happening, I was like, oh, fuck, Jesse picked this movie, not my fault. Yes, and I remember this scene. There are three iconic sexy scenes in this movie. That is one of them, the sex on the dryer, mm -hmm. the uh, whipped cream bikini, mm -hmm. and the strip club scene. Yep. Those three uh, formed... Defined your defined teenage Defined my high school <laughs> understanding of like, what... I should be doing like a checklist of what you had to do before you yeah. graduated. Have yeah. sex on a dryer, see my teacher naked, yes. and the only other thing was fucking cream. apple pie. That was the only other thing that was not in this movie, but it was something else that everyone was like, "Yeah, we got to fucking." Yeah, fucking apple pie. Um, <laughs> Never had. I still. That's still on my bucket list. Still haven't done it. Because um, every time you would think to do it, you're like, I don't know. This apple pie is going to just be delicious. Full ass I just, pie. I can't. I just want to eat the apple pie <laughs> instead. An expensive dessert. I can't. Maybe just like one slice, but then it's not the same. I wonder how many people statistically have fucked pies. Since American Pie, a bunch. You think is it I a think, thing? I think immediately, like is a that a bunch thing? of people. I think they saw it in the movie and they were like, "Yeah, I want to. I want to fuck that pie." <laughs> See, it never connected to me to actually do it. I always thought it was like there were. Oh. We had a lot of discussions about it. I don't think anyone I know ever did it, but there was there were a ton of like, it, Dude, "Should we fuck a pie?" It brought up like, "Oh, a sock would be easier," but then I'm like, "No, nah, then chafe." That's yeah. all I ever thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, uh, oh, so yeah, so yes. I, I remembered that we didn't see the vomit; that mm -hmm. his head was just in the dryer. And so you were okay or in with the this. washer? I mean, yeah. So uh -huh. the, okay, so note to all filmmakers out there: don't show. You don't need vomit. to show it. You don't need to show it. So now let's skip ahead to. Uh, there's a whole bunch of shit that happens, and then we go to the six ed, uh, the sex ed class where uh, the teacher, <sighs> smoking hot, and and just listen to this and tell me if we shouldn't have seen the strip club coming. Penis, 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 vagina, vagina, vagina. It's so triumphant. The vaginas are so like, yes, yes. <laughs> we can say it. It's uh, it's feminism. 
I don't know. I've never my my sex ed class. First off, they're a little old to be getting sex ed. Yeah, we got it early. We got it in like seventh or yeah. sixth grade. We had fifth grade. We had three different sex eds. With fifth grade, seventh grade, and maybe ninth I grade. Think just we did ninth grade. Also. Just in case you didn't fucking pay attention, they're yeah. like, hey. For real, though, this time. Yeah. Now that you got all your giggles out. <laughs> but they're treating this as if it's fifth grade sex ed, where, like, you're still going to giggle at penis. Right. I do remember in fifth grade, they were like, all right, everybody, we're going to say all these words and just get your giggles out now. I specifically remember that. Interesting. At Fairline Elementary, where they're like, penis, vagina. And that's why it's so weird that these people are, like, 18, and they're still like, <laughs> you said penis. It's it's literally the only classroom time we have with them Ever. in the whole Ever. movie. Ever. It's a high school movie, and this is the only time we see them in class. And the only reason it's there is to set up later on yes. that she's a stripper. Yes. Can we play also the clip? Uh, this is the various um, different phrases that could mean erection, by, courtesy of James Vanderbeek. Uh, pitching a tent. Mm -hmm. Heard that. Wood. Yep. Bicycles formed, marches on. Thank you, Jonathan. Stiff, Thank stiffy you. Mr. Mortis. <laughs> Rigor Mortis is set in. Flesh Rocket, uh, Jack's Magic Beanstalk, Tall okay. Tommy, Mushroom on a Stick, Mr. Mushroom Head, Purple Headed Yogurt Slinger, <laughs> and uh, Pedro. Pedro? Mm -hmm. Pedro? I unfortunately have heard Purple Headed Yogurt Slinger, and every time I hear that, I go, <laughs> Yeah. Because it's the <laughs> grossest description ever. It's pretty foul. Some of those. I, I'd never heard before. I've never heard of 80% of those. Uh, pitch in a tent. Sure, yeah. Sure. Um, let's play it again, and we're going to say yes or no during it. Uh, pitch in a tent. Yes. yes. Sporting wood. Yes. Bicycles formed. No. Nope. Is on. No. Thank you, Jonathan. Stiff, stiffy yeah. Mr. Yes. Mortis. <laughs> no. Rigor Mortis is set no. in. No. Flesh Rocket. Uh, Maybe, Jack's Magic sure. Beanstalk. No. Tall Tommy. No. no. Mushroom on a stick. No. Mr. Mushroom no. Head. No. Purple yeah. Headed Yogurt Slinger. <laughs> Unfortunately. And, uh, Pedro. Yeah, I have heard Pedro. <laughs> Never. Pedro. <laughs> that was, that's, I guess it could be because it's Spanish for Peter. Peter, yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's such a weird moment because it is almost like, I mean, I, I feel like the implication is that's what he calls his. Yeah. A little bit. Um, but we never go back to it, and we never. But like they carve out a huge moment for Pedro. Huge moment. Like a really extended, because then she responds, and then he goes, mm hmm. Well, and they just carve out a giant chunk of time for a extended boner joke. Right. For no yes. reason. For o The only reason is to get Billy Bob out of the classroom for long enough that he can have an incident and come back. And so it's something funny instead of just like, sex ed. Right. If you're just gonna, and, and it's weird also that they're going to take an entire class on an erection. Yeah. Why does it take an entire like 50 minute class to discuss an erection? Because uh, obviously because, there are a lot of terms for it. Because they're gonna let everyone in the room say yeah. all their terms. <laughs> <It's> gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna compile a master list. <laughs> and so we can figure out what the best way. And then we're gonna vote yeah. on it after that. So um, Billy Bob's in the bathroom, he's fucked up. Yeah, it was also like, oh, yeah. one more thing about that. It was, it was that moment seems really sort of out of character for Moxon. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they assigned it to him and not That would have been other. Tweeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have totally been Tweeter uh, or Billy Bob. Yeah, Moxon's like the level-headed straight guy. Right. And He's the intellectual. Yeah. Why would he? He's reading Vonnegut. Yeah, it was very odd. It's so strange. Yeah, it's just weird. It's a weird moment, but hey, it's funny. Uh, and now we know more terms for boners and some that we will never unknow. Uh, like purple headed yogurt. <laughs> so Billy Bob's fucked up. He's he's um he he he's got too many head injuries from all always getting hit, uh, which then ties into the game when they go to the game and he passes out on the field even he's being pressured to go out there by the coach and because of that Lance gets his knee injured. He's had scar tissue for years, and and the coach is like, I never heard anything about this. And James Vanderbeek is like, fuck you. And every time he says, I'm like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. You're ruining these people's futures because you're a greedy dickhead. Yeah. He's like a drill sergeant, which I know a lot of coaches are. That's why I could never be on a sports team because I just couldn't handle the emotional abuse. I don't deal well with confrontation, and I don't deal well with being yelled at. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I just go into a shell. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. Basically, I'm a giant wuss, is sure. what I'm saying. Sure. I couldn't handle it. This was not for you, then. More power. Uh, I get so mad. So then um, so then they go, they, then Mox gets put in the game, and he's instantly 
amazing. He well, they 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 hint at his arm earlier on. Yeah, so they let him. The the ball rolls over. For, so first of all, oh shit, we forgot the party where he hits his dad in the face. Yeah, yeah, we did, but that's okay. We can come back. The the ball rolls to him, and uh, he he's on the bench and he picks it up. And first of all, football games function with more than one football. So if that ball rolls out of bounds, great. Throw me a different one. That's fine. <laughs> Throw me that same one. We're real cheap here yeah, at this school. Yeah, we only have one ball. Yeah. So they need it. So they're all like waiting for him to throw it. And he launches it from the seated position so hard it blows the guy, the referee back. And everyone seems surprised as if no one on the team has ever seen him yeah. play football before. <laughs> as if, he would have had to have practiced this at some point. Yeah. Outside of his own... Yeah, you give him reps, yeah. right? At some point, you've seen him throw because you allowed him to be the backup to the quarterback. Yeah. So you've seen his arm before. It's and a complete it, plot hole. Yeah, and everyone's just like, Whoa, holy whoa. shit. Ah, fuck that guy. Back to the star guy. Yeah. So then um, he, he pl- there's this scene at the barbecue before Scott, uh, Paul Walker gets injured where they, they throw the ball and hit the beer off of Paul Walker's dad because Paul Walker's dad and, and James Vanderbeek's dad have a real rivalry because they, they think, you know, everybody thinks James Vanderbeek's a sissy. Right. And so he's like, hit me! And everybody, there's all these close up slow motion shots, throw the ball, Martian! And he just fucking nails his dad in the face yes. and purposefully and his nose is bleeding. It's awesome because his dad's a dick. Yeah. His mm-hmm. dad's a real piece of shit. Yep. And um, so then he's instantly a celebrity after winning this game. Uh, and we, we have Tweeter uh, that steals, these cops show up and Tweeter steals the cop car and gets away with it pretty much and then he not only does he get away with stealing a cop car he then because there's such celebrities in this town he picks up three women that are willing to disrobe and drive around in a in a stolen cop car drinking with him sure there's a budweiser on the dash i believe (laughs) so there's several and i think they even say he's 18 in the strip club scene so he would be convicted that would be a felony he would be a bunch of felonies many many felonies (laughs) but it's awesome Hey, can we play clip number seven? But we're all neck in there, and we got handcuffs and cool shit to play with. So take off your clothes and get in the car. <laughs> we're all neck in there, and we got cool shit to play with. <laughs> and I think at one point he's like, I'm going to jail, as he drives yeah, off. as he drives away, yeah. It's so good. But, you know, I, I will say, I went back to an, uh, my cousin's wedding in Ohio, in Massillon, Ohio, and... I'd never experienced a town like this before. Mm-hmm. But it was a big game between Maslin and Canton, and they're bitter rivals. And they had the f- high school football players, like their headshots on these banners, like we have for museums and stuff here, yeah. with their names, their stats. And like you went into their local thrift store, and everybody had the Maslin shirts on, and they were like saying, "Go!" Oh, I forget the name of the team, like an asshole. But anyways, they were like, they were like, "Go, whatever." And and you're just like, "Yeah, okay." And everybody was so like fucking pumped about this high school football game it's very strange to it's, care that much about high school sports yeah i mean i respect it but it also to me it like puts these kids on a pedestal which this movie shows at such a young age that they're gonna develop emotional issues later on where you cannot ever reclaim that kind of godhood that they're yeah. given you're gonna most people are gonna turn into that guy who gets hits in the who gets hit in the nuts <laughs> yeah. in the beginning of the movie yeah. who's just like i I had so much glory when I was here. Why would I leave? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad high school kind of sucked for me for the most part. I did a couple cool plays towards the end and started to hit my stride. But for the most part, high school was terrible. Yeah. So I'm like, deuces, it can't get any worse. Right. But yeah, if you peak in high school, oh, the kid who used to bully me now uh, just mows lawns for a living. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But he was like on a track to be. Now he bullies lawns. Now he bullies the shit out of those lawns. <laughs> I don't actually know if he mows lawns, but he does. Actually, he does. He does. Last time I checked. There you go. I, I, every once in a while, I check in on it's Facebook. It's because he owns many properties. <laughs> That's what it is. He, <laughs> he very, he very closely I, manicures. The, I just saw the, him on yeah. a on a lawnmower, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, ha ha, fuck you! Yeah. And it's like, oh wait, oh no, oh you're now a realtor and you're multi millionaire. Like nice. He's like, hi Ben Begley. <laughs> It is weird, though, how, how Facebook heals all wounds. I'm now friends yeah. sometimes with people who were real shitty to me earlier on. Anyway, so we... <laughs> what if I just start going on to a tangent about that? Uh, what is this? What is clip number eight? One so we, we already did that. Already, yeah. yeah. So then uh, let's cut to the strip club, because that's what everybody wants. Oh, no, first off, Allie Larda, the, the whipped cream yeah, bikini whipped cream scene. Bikini. 
So he's just like his. I mean, Jules is a real not nice to to Van, Van Der Beek when he's a star football player. She doesn't really let him enjoy it. She's just kind of like you're just like everybody else now. She, he goes to her work. She's like, I don't date football players. She's very one dimensional in this moment where like she just instantly is like, fuck you. Instead of the years they've been together, be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't let this get to your head. Let me help you work through this. Yeah, there. So a couple of things we don't we're never privy to how long anyone's relationship has lasted seemingly or, a month yeah, because like, of how they act have with no each idea. other and then they also like the way they seem to end things is like i've never in high school if anyone had ended a relationship with me just by like ghosting me or just being like we'll just see what happens as we move through life yeah. i'd be like no wait hold on and huh. i would like follow that person until they were like get the fuck away from me i don't want to see you anymore I'd be, uh, okay good okay, cool. now i have closure now Great. i have closure yeah um, so it's very strange to me that people were just like, eh, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Like, we don't have to talk about this, or we can. It's up to you, but I'm done. <laughs> it's super weird. What? But so he he's kind of, rightfully so, he's bummed out by Jules, who's not being very understanding. And he gets hit on again by Allie Larder. And Allie Larder, both Amy Smart and Allie Larder are beautiful. So it's like, good God, how do you choose? Especially if one's being kind of shitty to you now and the other one's being more supportive <laughs> or just throwing sure. herself at you. He's sure. a teenager. His hormones are raging. And he, he's, but it is his best friend's girl. Anyways, and it's his girlfriend's brother's ex. It's so complicated. So he goes to her house. She's like, you want some a sundae? You want a dessert or something? She comes out whipped cream bikini. One of the sexiest things ever. Yeah. With two cherries for nipples. Yeah. And he says no, because he's just, you have to have that save the cat moment for that, where if he would have had sex with her, you would have a really hard time rooting for him the rest of the movie. Sure. But then they humanize her a little bit more, like we said, by saying, I just want to get out of this town. In a very weak kind of afterthought way of like, oh yeah, what we've been doing is shitty. Let's throw this in. Yeah, and like I said, she she wants to get out of town, so she abandons her befallen boyfriend, <laughs> yeah. jumps on with another guy Super who shitty. is in a relationship, yeah. and she doesn't care about either of those, any any of those three people. No. She's just using one of them so that she can do something that she could easily do on her own. But she turns a corner after this, because later on she's like, hey, we can be friends. But then she still kisses him on the mouth in front of Jules. Yeah, for a long time. So... Like an extended slow kiss. So she's kind of shitty the whole time, Yeah, Allie mm -hmm. Larder. Good thing you redeemed yourself in the Final Destination movies. Am I right? Yup. <laughs> yup. So, anyways, um... We, we go to the... Uh, where am I? I can't even fucking remember now. Oh, okay, so we go to the strip club, because James Vanderbeek wants to take everybody out. And they've hinted at this again with the sex ed teacher's bomb-ass car that she's driving. They're yes. like, how'd she get that on a teacher's salary? Yeah. We find out in this scene. The other thing right before this um, yeah. that we found out that is only hinted at again later, but never brought up beforehand and never really like investigated, is the black running back is like, cool. coach is racist. They hint at it later, but later, later, later on again when they when he's he right. actually lets Wendell get the touchdown. Yeah, they but, they bring it up in this moment for that moment, but there's no there's nothing beforehand no. where we're like he seems racist. <laughs> I mean, uh, he just seems like he hates everyone. He seems like right. an Archie Bunker of coaches. Right? How can you discern racism from general hatred? Well, I, I do think Wendell question. brings up that point though, where he never lets him score a touchdown. But you're right. It is solely brought up so it can be... So later, James Vanderbeek can be the one who's like, I'm giving... I got you. I got you. You're yeah. my friend. Um, Which they don't really... Other other than that moment, they don't really give Wendell much to do in no, the movie. No, He's just like, unfortunately, generic token black friend who's like, hey, and, everybody, and the coach is racist to me. So it's like, oh, come on. You could have given him a more defining trait than... Yeah then people are racist to him. Yeah. It's which <laughs> which like I like I it's believable from where they are and what's going on. As, and like and apparently it seems like he's the only uh, black kid in the entire school yeah, from there, what I see. There was uh like when in one of the locker room scenes there was a guy last name Peña. So we do have a Hispanic <laughs> player as well. <laughs> um so one black one Hispanic, yeah. but everyone else is white it seems. But don't get me wrong, I'm nitpicking small details. I had a blast at this movie, but yeah. yeah, his character is basically there just to make you hate the coach more. Yeah, and just that moment where he's like, "Hey, I'm, we're going out later." And he's like, "Man, fucking coach is racist." <laughs> like, what? It comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then they go to the strip club and uh I, I this 
it's like, first off, I don't know if half of them are legal enough to be in there, but it doesn't matter in they're this town. They're definitely not legal to drink, and they're no. shots on the house, I yes. guess. Yes, they get, uh, because everybody loves this football team so much, which yeah. I would love to research if this really happens in real towns like this, that they get... Yes. Yes? yes. Okay, okay. So they're in this trip club, they're getting free beers, they're getting free lap dances, and um, then a, a woman comes out, a brunette, uh, with sex ed written on a chalkboard in a teacher's outfit with hot for teacher playing. Yep. It couldn't be more on the nose nope. and more kind of awesomely sexy sure. than what it is. And they instantly realize it's their sex ed teacher. Well, she has her back to them for like the first 15 seconds of the song. Yeah. And so they're like, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell and then yeah. she turns around, they're like, oh boy. And she really handles it like a trooper because they laugh hysterically at her yes. and she still rocks it like she's not phased by this at all yeah she's like this had to happen someday i'm yeah. stripping <laughs> like if you're gonna be a teach a high school teacher and a stripper go one town over yeah or like three towns over yeah you know yeah and like it was directly on the nose like maybe maybe do some a little different yeah. maybe like try and protect yourself a little bit yeah but yeah, you're, you're, no I she mean, was she basically just walked down the hallway from the school onto the stage <laughs> And brought the chalkboard yeah, with her. Yeah. So then, so then, what happens? Uh, they don't. Re they don't really resolve it till later. They're all just like sitting around the table, and they're all complimenting her mm -hmm. and the boner that she has given them. And can we play uh, clip number nine, please? This is Billy Bob's rating of her. I give it a uh, a ten, a ten, a fucking ten. Yeah. He is very excited. He doesn't start out excited, but he ramps it up real quick. It's as if they did coke and it just set in, right? Yeah. Can we play that again? I give it a, uh, a 10. A 10. A fucking 10. Oh, Billy Bob, that coke had a delayed response. Oh, boy. Ah, fucking 10. Oh, man. He he must have puked and rallied right before he that puked moment. puked and rallied right before that yeah. moment. <laughs> This is, you, you talk about a lot, like, movies that you quote throughout your life all the time. Yeah. This is one of those for me. That, like, I give it a 10, a 10, a fucking 10. Yeah. And I don't want your life. Those two things I say all the time. All the time. All the time. I have said I don't want your laugh. And, like like I said, I don't remember if it's that I actually saw this movie or if I just remember that being, like, something that people... Because people kind of made fun of his accent yeah. in this a yeah. ton. Uh -huh. And and this was Dawson... This was around Dawson's Creek, a little after, yeah. I think, where he was trying to break the mold of that. He, which he does a great job in this. Even those accents kind of falters. I think he's great in this, and he's also really good in the rules of attraction. He's fucking awesome in that, that movie. One. That movie's great. But he did do a really smart thing um, when he was trying to... When he was creating an adult career, yeah. um, probably, like, five or six years ago, um, he played himself in Don't Trust the like, Bee in Apartment for 13. two years. He did that, and then he also did a commercial where he did the I Don't Want Your Life in a car That's funny. commercial. Yep. He William Shatner did. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. Yep. So uh, let's just say I Don't Want Your Life. Let's play that. So this is after the. So what happens is they get hammered, and they have a game the next day. They stay up till dawn. Mm -hmm. They're fucked up. They play the game against one of the worst teams in the district. They get their asses handed to them. The coach is furious. The whole town's been let down. The dad's mad at him. He's like, I hear you took him to a strip club, and that's what happened. And he's like, this is your blah, blah, blah. And then this is what James Vanderbeek says. Playing football at West Canaan may have been the opportunity of your lifetime, but I don't want your life. All right. Hey, listen to that articulation. Can that we play that one more time? Playing football at West Canaan may have been the opportunity of your lifetime, but I don't want your life. So beautiful. It's so right. It's so right. And it's perfect for like watching it in high school and just being like, fuck yeah, man. You don't want his life. Be I think, your own man. I think that was a I think this was a quote that was taken from the movie Big, right? Yes. At the mm -hmm. end when the kid and Tom Hanks meet up yep. and and Tom Hanks kinda wants to switch back again and the kid just looks at Tom Hanks and says Playing oh, no. football in West Canaan may have been <laughs> that one. That one. There we go. Life. There we go. Let's play it again. So they, I don't want your life. You know? Yeah. That's often when, uh, you know, whenever I've tried to trade places with people, I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, like, um, like I, I played poker uh, back in the day with my, but when I used to work at Tokyo Delves, we'd go to Vegas and we'd play uh, Texas Hold'em, and mm -hmm. I was always pretty bad. Sure. And so I'd try and switch hands with my buddy next to me, and like see if we could switch places for a little bit and let me win for a few, and he would just be like, but I don't want your life. I'm like, Jesus, I just wanted to yeah, switch hands. Just hands. Like, I'm not... <laughs> 
My life isn't God. that bad. I was I was at a sleepover in high school, and <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna say like three like weeks ago. Like a couple weeks ago. Well, same same difference. <laughs> um, and I, I was at my buddy's house, and he it was like the morning, and we were eating cereal, and he brought out life cereal, and he finished the fucking box, and he handed me <sighs> Cheerios, and I was like. I don't want Cheerios, and he had already taken a bite, and he was like, "But I don't want your life." <laughs> he was gonna give it. To he you, was right? gonna give it to me, and I was like, but "I don't. I don't want, want your, your life. life. I, I want, want my own, own, my own life. My own life." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. So uh, let's skip ahead now. So things are bad. The the he gets into Brown, and uh, Vanderbeek gets into uh, an acceptance letter to Brown. And then the coach is like, you play by my rules or I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to ruin your scholarship. He's really dastardly in this moment. Yeah. Wendell gets injured in the game because uh, they're they're running him up the field. He gets his touchdown because Vanderbeek defies him. He gets injured and Vanderbeek stops him from getting the needle in his leg, which is a fucking great scene where he's yeah. like, if you put that needle in his leg, I'm, qu I'm quitting. And I, think, then I think this is number 12, actually. We kill ourselves for you. You round, we play hurt, we play sick, and we spend most of that time scared that we're gonna screw up and you're gonna kick our ass because you don't really give a fuck about us. All you care about is your next district title. Give him the shot. You give him that shot, you find yourself another fucking quarterback. Boom. Oh, so fucking good. I love I was like I think I, like I had headphones on, it was like midnight in yeah. my place. I was like I yeah. stood up and was like, fuck yeah! Yep. Screw you, Kilmer! Uh, so then they all defy him. He leaves, and he's just like sad walking down the hallway alone. It's a badass moment. Really, really good. They moment. go out there and they fucking they win the game. Uh, they do the oop de oop, which <laughs> when they, which I don't know anything about football, but the whole receivers thing. Apparently, everyone's very surprised when there's five receivers. They're like, how many receivers? Dang, go scoot and pooter snatch at the hoot and scoot. There's yeah. five receivers. Yeah. So this is another thing where it's like, okay. Um, oh shit! Oh shit! Did we kill <laughs> we everything? Lost our time? Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, so the five receivers and no huddle are just like m maybe I, I have lost context, but it's just like things people do now. Oh, and okay. It, but back then it was unheard of. Maybe yeah. I mean, in this town, in this town, I guess, and um, just a. Uh, and the hook and ladder, which is what they run at the end, was so great because Paul Walker d gives him like a hook and then a ladder. Yeah. It's like anyone looking over can decipher this. You might as well just yell out hook and ladder. <laughs> just be like, oh, that's what they're playing. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so are we able to play another sound clip or are we booted out for now? Okay. No, it's right. okay. It's okay. So yeah, the, the oop de oop wins the game and Billy Bob makes the touchdown like a boss. Yep. He gets the ball. He has three dudes climbing on him yeah. and he he's like he's unstoppable he's like the juggernaut no one can stop the juggernaut <laughs> i'm the juggernaut bitch remember that no. oh yes 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 i don't even know how much time we have left are we done or do we need to wait for the computer to boot up no it's okay cool. let's just so, uh, so i sped along and now i don't have anything that's else all right to say. we got a couple of a couple of football notes here yeah please one because i know none of it every single play Probably seventy-five percent of the people ended up on the ground, which is not what happened. People are upright <laughs> yeah. at all times, yeah. and just like everyone who was blocking, uh, like so, the whole offensive and defensive line ended up on the ground. Uh -huh. And if that happens, the quarterback would just run with the ball. Like, <laughs> what if this goes on for another five minutes and my eyes just go? We'll see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is like, kind of exciting. I don't know what's they happening. Also, coach insisted that they're a running team, um, but they, I guess, they had the number one quarterback prospect in the country which is a position that throws the ball ah so that was kind of a weird contradiction um sports fans i hope you're enjoying this because i'm everyone, just nodding and smiling everyone follows what's going on right now <laughs> um they set up the thing when james vanderbeek broke the his dad's nose yeah that he then like to stop the clock threw the ball out of bounds and he, knocked he, over the mascots we, that this, that doesn't work that way though right you can't just hit a mascot and be cool right i mean so what happens in that situation is to stop the clock, you just throw the ball into the ground. So you get up on the line, you throw it on the ground, it's considered an incomplete pass, uh, and the clock stops. So rather than doing that, he was having fun with it. I do like that he hits the Mountie off or whatever. The problem is the clock doesn't stop until the ball hits something. So if you spike it, the clock stops immediately. If you throw a pass, you're losing seconds. And if you throw it behind you, which he did, you're losing yards. You're right. So, See, I didn't know that. And they, they have a narrow window. They have seven seconds, which I'm pretty sure. Reckless. I'm pretty sure Billy Bob couldn't run that fast. The other thing, and this is the last thing, there are other things, but this is the last thing that I will say, is they're down by three. 
and they're on the 10 yard line. No one ever discussed, no one in the booth, the coach, the Paul Walker, the quarterback, no one ever discussed, why don't we kick a field goal, tie this game up, and go to overtime? It's not dramatic, Jesse. They were, no one. Okay, no can one we play nice it. ass? I don't even know what that clip was. Let me play it real, real, real quick. I don't think I have a bony ass. I don't think I have a very nice ass. <laughs> it is kind of nice. <laughs> hey. There we go. That's the perfect way That's to end this. That's a great one, Anna. Uh, I gave it a, uh, a 10. A 10. A, a fucking 10. Yeah. I had a blast at this movie. This movie's a lot of fun. It's 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 just a good sports movie. Yeah. It's vulgar. It's funny. It's got dramatic stakes. I give it a 10. Yeah. A ten, well, I give it like a 6.5. A 6.5. It's, it's, I enjoyed it. It's a good sports movie. It's also a good high school, like, yeah. kind of age movie. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, had, I had fun with this. Let's, let's do some more movies I haven't seen or I've only seen the select scenes <laughs> from. Uh, until next week, where can they find you, Jesse? Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Too Much Jesse and for Sketch at The Prom Losers. You find me at The Ben Begley on Twitter and Instagram. And my wife and I have at Parents vs. Baby. It's a parenting comedy uh, sketches, blogs, we're going to have a podcast on there, everything. You can go to parentsversusbaby.com, V-S, not V like Batman v Superman, parentsversusbaby.com. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, what is your guilty movie pleasure? From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. I'd like to thank you for From the you. Popcorn for Talk questions or comments, be sure the to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.